1995, only days before Christmas, an American Airlines Boeing 757 is on its final approach to Cali, Colombia. Cali approach, American 965. The pilots are calm and relaxed. They don't know they've made a terrible mistake. 965, 9,000 feet. They've strayed more than 16 kilometers off course and no longer have a clue where they are. Oh, f Hold up, baby. In complete darkness, the jet carrying 163 passengers and crew is heading into mortal danger. I think we knew that something imminent was, was around the corner. Flight 965 crashed into a 2,700 meter mountain. The crash reverberated throughout the aviation industry. How could one of the most technologically advanced aircraft in the world, equipped with a state-of-the-art navigational system and flown by some of the most skilled pilots, crash into the side of a mountain? On December the 20th, 1995, American Airlines Flight 965 is preparing to depart Miami International Airport. Make her slut, but, uh, well... Its destination is Cali, Colombia. Flight 965 is scheduled to leave at 4.40 p.m., but has already been delayed for 30 minutes at the gate to allow for connecting passengers. Surely you're going to call us any second time. The Dusans only just made it. In Miami, they tell us that we have to rush because the plane gonna 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 leave to Cali very soon. Definitely, we were very happy because we know we're gonna fly that night. So you made it, just in time. Yeah. Just in time. You won't believe it. Go from New Jersey to Miami. We almost missed the flight. Mercedes Ramirez, along with her mother and father, managed to get on the flight at the last minute. Well, we were on standby, so we weren't sure if. Our names were going to be called off to actually get on that flight. We heard our names and we were excited because like, yes, we got on the flight. But it's very old American. Flight 965 finally leaves the gate at 5.14 p.m., 34 minutes late. But the problems aren't over yet. As they taxi towards the runway, the tower informs them of yet another delay. American 965, stand by. Heavy seasonal traffic clogs the runways, and they're forced to wait another hour and 20 minutes on the tarmac. Ready, that's all there is to it. Wait, Jim. Damn. American 965. Finally, American two hours 965. late, flight 965 American is cleared for takeoff. Two, seven, right. Fly the runway heading. Clear for takeoff. Merry Christmas. Cleared for takeoff. Two, seven, right. American 965, you do a great job. Good night. Captain Nicholas Tafuri, aged 57, is in charge of Flight 965. He's one of American Airlines' premier pilots with more than 13,000 hours of flying experience, over 2,000 of them in the 757. He'd flown to Cali only six days earlier. 200, the heading, climb to 16. That 16 American 965. At the controls is First Officer Donny R. Williams, age 39. Although he's been flying for American for nine years, Flight 965 is his first trip to Cali. It's the holiday season, and the plane is filled with passengers starting their Christmas celebrations. Everybody on that plane was either going back home for the Christmas holidays to visit their family. So I think everybody was just happy and excited to go back. The day of the flight, December the 20th, is a very special day for passenger Mercedes Ramirez. Mercedes is a university student from Missouri. It's her 21st birthday, and this trip is a gift from her parents. We had never spent the holidays with our family in Colombia, so it was a big deal for us. Gonzalo Dusan and his wife Nancy and their two children, Michelle and Gonzalo Jr., are seated nearby. We were very excited because the first time, you know, we're going with my family to pass, you know, Christmas over there in Cali. We wanted to see our families 
members, you know, brothers, sister, you know, to see our city again. Two hours and 45 minutes into the flight, the plane is cruising at an altitude of 11,300 meters and on a pre-programmed flight path heading towards Carly's airport. Six miles. They're flying a Boeing 757, a state-of-the-art airplane equipped with highly sophisticated computer systems. When programmed with the appropriate data, the onboard computer, known as the flight management system, can control the aircraft from takeoff to landing. It can be a pilot's best friend, or in the case of Flight 965, their worst nightmare. An awkward moment an hour before their scheduled arrival in Cali makes Mercedes Ramirez change seats. My mother had been talking to the college student who was next to her, and I think she was trying to kind of set me up with him because she kept on saying, oh, my daughter's in college, and my daughter's this, and my daughter's that. So I was very embarrassed. So I got up from my seat and moved to the row behind us, and I, I sat with my father. The seemingly trivial decision will prove to be her lifesaver. It's a clear, moonless night with visibility more than 10 kilometers. Gonzalo de San's children quarrel over the window seat, not knowing that the consequences will be dire. And I was fighting with my brother, Gonzalito. We were fighting for the window. Okay, Gonzalito, let your sister have a chance by the window. And I'm like, oh, I want to I wanna see, I want to see the lights, I want to see the airport. And he got mad. Okay, Michelle, we'll see you. Oh, see with your cousin. Good boy, Gonzalito. Give me a take a look at the lights. Let's go, sit down. Come sit down. We're almost there. Michelle, can you see the lights outside the window? Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We have begun our descent for landing at Cali. It's a lovely evening. As we'd expected. We'll pass a shower or two on the way in. This lovely evening is about to end. In 30 seconds, the pilots will make the first of a series of mistakes, which will result in the death of nearly everyone on board. American Airlines Flight 965 is on its final descent, roughly 100 kilometers from Cali. Cali's Aragon Airport is situated at the end of a long valley. On both sides of the valley are towering mountain ranges that stretch to almost 4,300 meters. It's a formidable sight. What are these, Nesta? Nothing. You want your water? You want to wait until we get on the ground without your water? No, oh, I'll wait for the ground. To guide the plane on its proper pre-programmed flight path, the aircraft must pass over a series of waypoints. These are generally radio beacons at fixed positions along the route. The plane's computer picks up the signal from these beacons, one after the other, and guides it safely to the destination. Flight 965 is now approaching the waypoint called Tulua. Tulua is a radio beacon at the head of the valley which leads to Kali. After passing Tulua, they should fly down the valley and pass over the final waypoint called Rozo. Then they fly past the airport, turn right, and land from the south. She did really well. <laughs> Cali approach, American 965. American 965, good evening. Go ahead. Uh, buenas noches, senor. American 965. Carly Air Traffic Controller Nelson Rivera will oversee the final approach of Flight 965. But he has a problem. Insurgents opposed to the Colombian government have blown up the radar installation. Rivera has no way of knowing where planes are until they radio their position. The distance, DME from Cali? Without radar, the air traffic controller must rely on the flight crew to provide the aircraft's distance to the runway. The DME is 
The DME is the distance measuring equipment in the Boeing cockpit. Uh, descend and maintain one, 5,000 feet. Altimeter? 3002. Report down to Lua. Okay, understood. Clear direct to Cali, VOR, uh, report to Lua. Affirmative. It's a misunderstanding. Captain Tafuri thinks he's being told to fly direct to Cali and forget all about Tulua. But the controller needs him to report when he passes Tulua so that he knows where the plane is. To me, the word directly means that he was authorized to go directly to Cali, that there was no delay. Therefore, he had to inform us of his position in Tulua because we don't have radar. I needed him to inform me of that exact location. Tafuri punches direct to Kali in his computer. Since the plane no longer has to pass over them, all the waypoints between his present position and Kali will now be erased, including Tulua, the one he's now approaching. Put direct Kali for you in there. Okay, thank you. Uh, flight attendants, uh, please prepare for landing. Thank you. And I remember they they give us the order to, to put the, the, the back of the seat straight. I remember that. And everybody was you know, so happy because we were very close to the city. Eleven minutes before their estimated time of arrival. Go ahead, please. Sir, the wind is gone. Air traffic control asks the flight crew if they'd like to land on runway 19. You want to shoot the 19 speed in? Instead of their planned approach to runway 01. Yeah, we'll have to scramble to get down. We can do it. Uh, yes, sir. We'll need a lower altitude right away, though. Roger. The American 965 is cleared to VOR DME. Okay. The pilots are pleased. Runway 19 is a straight in approach from the north. They won't have to lose precious time by circling the airport. But there isn't much time. They need to start getting the plane down quickly. Williams deploys the speed brakes. The brakes are flaps on the top of the wings. When they're raised, they reduce lift and increase the plane's rate of descent. Approach runway 19. Road zone number one arrival. Report. This split second decision to land on runway 19 sets off a chain of events that will end in disaster. Arrival will report VOR. Thank you, sir. Report uh, to Lua, VOR. Report to Lua. I gotta give you a Tulua first of all. You wanna go right to Cal or to Tulua? I thought he said the Rosa one wrap. Yeah, he did. We got time to pull that out. Events begin to unravel very quickly in the cockpit. The pilots have to locate the new charts for the approach to 19, enter the new route into the computer, and still fly the plane. And Tulua one Rosa. Yeah, there it is. See, that comes off Tulua. They're getting totally confused. The controller keeps asking them to report when they've passed Tulua. But having erased it from their computer, they have no idea where it is. Captain Tafuri asks the tower if they can forget to lure and fly directly to Rozo, their last waypoint before the runway. Can American Airlines uh, 965 go direct to Rozo? And then do the Rozo arrival, sir. Affirmative. Take the Rozo 1 and runway 19. The wind is calm. All right, Rozo, the Rozo 1 to 19. Thank you, American 965. Report to Lua at 21 miles and 5,000 feet. Okay, report to Lua. The controller is still asking them to report passing the Tulua beacon. Without radar, he doesn't realize that they're already past it and are speeding down the valley towards the airport. Captain Tafuri now makes another fateful decision. Having decided that they're going to head for the Rozo waypoint instead, he punches R into his computer. The computer database responds by offering a list of more than 10 waypoints to choose from, all beginning with R. Normally, the nearest one, Rozo, would be at the top of the list, but tonight, it's not. Captain Tafuri doesn't notice and pushes the execute button. At nearly 520 kilometers per hour and descending at a rate of nearly 400 meters per minute, flight 965 begins to veer off on a new and deadly course. I never imagined that they were deflecting the route in addition to losing altitude. Because I didn't have radar. In the cockpit of Flight 965, the pilots are completely unaware of what they've done. They're busy studying charts as their plane crosses the mountains into unknown territory.
For more than a minute, American Airlines Flight 965 has been turning off its proper course and into the mountains. Captain Tafuri and First Officer Williams suddenly notice that their aircraft is taking them somewhere that they don't want to go. To, uh, Let's go right to Tolua, first of all, okay? Uh, yeah, where are we headed? Uh, 177. Captain Tafuri is floundering in the pitch darkness. If he could only find the Tolua waypoint, he could get his bearings. He switches from one computer system to another and then manually enters the radio frequency for the Tolua beacon. Okay, I'm getting it. 177 just doesn't seem right on mine. I don't know why. Left turn. So you want a left turn back around to ULQ? No, nah, hell no. Let's press on to. We're, we're um, pre press on to where though? Tolua. Hopelessly lost, and less than two minutes from impact, Tafuri decides to press on with his doomed approach. Right. Let's uh, go to Cali, first of all, okay? We have a here, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, go direct CLO. How do we get up here? Uh, come to the right right now. Come to the right right now. The pilots don't know it, but when the plane veered off course, it crossed over the mountains. They're now in another valley, parallel with the one they should be flying down. Passengers are completely unaware that in less than 60 seconds, the aircraft traveling over 340 kilometers per hour is going to crash. We're almost there. It's that Tolua I'm not getting for some reason. See, okay, okay, now, no, Tolua's Okay, yeah. But I can put it in the box if I you want. I want Tolua, uh, let's just go to the extended center line of... Uh, Which is Rozo. Rozo. Well, why don't you just go direct to Rozo then, all right? Okay, let's... I'm gonna put that over to you. They decide to give up on Tolua and make straight for the airport. They don't realize that there's now a wall of mountains between them and Carly. Niner 65, altitude. 9,000 feet. Roger. Decent now. The plane's ground proximity warning system is telling them they're about to crash. This is Cali approach. Can you hear me? He didn't answer. He never answered again. I could feel that we were just violently just going up. And I felt like I was in a roller coaster ride or something. Easy does it, easy does it. Instinctively, I reached over and I, I grabbed my father's hand and I put my head in my lap. In my mind, I just kept on thinking, come on, just straighten it out, straighten it out. These were the last words on the cockpit voice recorder. At 9.42 p.m. on its final approach to runway 19, American Airlines Flight 965 seemingly vanishes without a trace. American 965, this is Cali approach. Can you hear me? I never experienced anything like this before. This was the first time that I lost a plane and the crew was not responding. It is very difficult to grasp the moment. When the plane didn't answer, I looked outside from the control tower. I could see from there the sky. I started to look for the plane. The night was clear and I thought I could see the plane coming. But in this case, I never saw the plane. Moments after the plane's scheduled arrival, airport monitors indicate a seven minute delay. Friends and family wait with anticipation for the arrival of their loved ones. As the revised arrival time comes and goes, rumors begin to circulate throughout the terminal that air traffic control has lost contact with Flight 965. 
In an instant, Joy turns to shock as cries that the plane has crashed spread throughout the terminal. Locals living near the town of Bulga, north of Kali, report hearing a massive explosion. Rescue teams race to the town, which lies near the base of a local mountain range that stretches as high as 4,200 meters. It's now 3 a.m., almost six hours after the crash. The first elements of the search and rescue team are trekking up the side of El Deluvio mountain. There are no roads. It's completely cut off. In the midst of tons of twisted and torn metal lies 21-year-old Mercedes Ramirez. Her last memory prior to impact is grabbing her father's hand and the deafening sound from the back of the plane of the tail section striking trees. The next memory I have is the next day. It's daylight. I wake up and it's, I see the sunlight uh, around me and I don't know where I am. And what's around me looks like a, like a landfill, like a trash dump. And so as I'm laying there, I'm thinking, where in the world am I? Mercedes is critically injured with severe internal injuries and a shattered leg. Help! Is anybody out there? Help me! 19 year old college student Mauricio Reyes also survives the impact Can you hear me? and responds to Mercedes' cry for help. Can you move? Um, I can try. Uh, I'm not sure. My, my leg is bad. Backwards. Okay. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Okay. Help me, please. Okay. The only way for me to get out was having to drag myself over people. And I remember this lady who I had to drag myself over, and I'll, I'll, I'll never forget her. Looking back, I think, oh my goodness, that was someone's mom, or that was someone's sister, or someone's wife. But at that time, she was just an object that I needed to get over to get out. Okay? Okay. Just stay here. Okay. 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 Oh. okay. Help! Is anybody out there? At first light, the Colombian Air Force starts searching for the crash site. They were unable to leave earlier because they had no night vision equipment. up I start to feel the pain in my back then when I hear the sound of the helicopters I realize something happened I started not to feel panic help me someone please help me daddy I'm here papa Michelle Gonzalo Dusan's six-year-old daughter Michelle still strapped in her seat answers her father's desperate call for help He's talking to me okay so I realized that my, my daughter was alive too. Then I started to crawl to try to look for my where the voice of my daughter coming from. Michelle, please, I'm coming. Where are you? Dusan struggles to crawl Michelle. through the broken and twisted cabin to reach his daughter, but she's pinned beneath the wreckage. Ow! Ow! My leg hurts. When the plane crashed, my legs, I have my seatbelt on. And I, I guess the crash was so deep that my legs speared into the ground. Okay. I tried to move myself, but my legs hurt. They hurt really bad. I couldn't pick myself up. Daddy, it hurts. Okay, okay Michelle. I'm going to get, get some water for you soon and bring it back, okay? Then I tried to crawl more to try to get out. Despite a severe back injury, Dusan manages to crawl towards a small open section of the fuselage. I saw a hole behind me, and I said inside me, I said, God, help me to get out from here. 
Over here! Help us! When I get up of the fuselage of the plane, I remember my son talk to me. Gonzalito! And he he say, Father, Father, help me. Gonzalito! Despite a desperate search, Gonzalo Dusan is unable to locate his son amongst the wreckage. Gonzalito! Realizing there's no way to get off the mountain by foot, the survivors of Flight 965 are still unsure if they will ever make it. The temperatures have fallen dramatically, and without protective clothing, they could die of exposure in a matter of hours. Stay awake for Papa, okay? Okay, Michel? Since first light, the Colombian Air Force has been searching for the crash site without success. With each passing minute, the four survivors, all gravely injured, take one step closer to death. Shortly after daybreak, the crew of a Black Hawk chopper spots the crash site. I could see the helicopters perfectly from where I was at, and um, even though I could see them perfectly, I didn't know if they could if they could see me. When when I saw the helicopter very close to the trees, to the top of the trees, I started to move in the, the blanket. I started to move in the blanket. Then so I say, oh, they saw they saw me, they saw me. They saw me, they're coming for us. More than eight hours after impact, and after enduring life-threatening injuries and near-freezing temperatures, the survivors of Flight 965 are about to be rescued. People finally know that we're here, and they're finally here to, to rescue us after so many hours of being stuck on that side of that mountain. So seeing them was one of the greatest things ever. They came and they throw a rope and the people start to descend. And you know, I was so happy because I feel you know that they, they're gonna help us. The first thing I told him, my son is alive. My son is alive, but I don't know where he is. Help me to find him, please help me to find him. And my daughter is alive, I told him. She, she's inside, she's inside the fuselage. As the rescue team divided up, one went into the fuselage to free Michelle. Another scoured the site for Gonzalo Dusan Jr. Gonzalo is found hanging in the branch of a nearby tree. He's been suspended in the air above the crash site for more than eight hours. His condition is grave. Mauricio Reyes is the first to be airlifted off the mountain. Low cloud cover grounds the chopper and delays the removal of the remaining survivors. Fearing that Michelle Dusan may not survive the wait, volunteers decided to take a calculated risk. They fashioned a makeshift stretcher out of a piece of the wreckage and began to evacuate Michelle off the mountain by foot. Shortly after Michelle Dussan left the crash site, the weather clears and the remaining survivors are airlifted to a base camp halfway down the mountain and then to hospital for emergency medical treatment. More than 13 hours after the crash of Flight 965, Michelle Dussan is the last survivor to emerge from the jungle of El Deluvio alive. Surgeons attempt to save the life of her brother, Gonzalo Jr., but he dies on the operating table from massive internal injuries. Of the 163 passengers and crew on board Flight 965, only four survived the crash. Experts will later label the accident a non-survivable event. All of the survivors were seated within two rows of one another, just above the wing. Huge girders carrying the wings make this the strongest part of the plane. Despite this, Mercedes Ramirez lost both her parents on her 21st birthday. December 20th, 1995, 
my life changed forever and has never been the same ever since. There was 160 people on that flight who, the moment that plane hit that mountain, all their hopes and dreams were instantly lost. But for some reason, I've been given a second chance at life, and so I'm gonna try to make the best of it. Investigators now descend on the crash site to try to find out how one of the most sophisticated airliners, equipped with state-of-the-art technology, could veer off course and crash more than 56 kilometers from the airport. American Airlines Flight 965 crashed on approach to Carly Airport. The plane carrying 163 passengers and crew hit a mountain near the remote town of Uga. The wreckage and debris report indicated that the airplane actually impacted the eastern side of the mountain as it was trying to proceed back west to get into the valley. And the main body of the wreckage cleared the mountain top, or the ridge, I should say, and landed over on the western side, which is inside the valley area. Also following the investigation was Dave Simmon, an airline captain who knew the Carly approach well. In the days that followed the crash, the industry was shocked. They were shocked because they didn't know how could a sophisticated airplane like the 757, flown by a well-respected international carrier like American Airlines with well-trained crews, get so far off course. Nobody could figure out how did it happen, why did it happen. Sabotage and mechanical malfunction were soon ruled out. Attention began to focus on the action of the flight crew. The discovery of the black boxes enabled the investigators to follow the final moments of American Airlines Flight 965. There is never one single item that, or error that typically brings an airplane down. There's an error chain, and a chain is made up of many links. The airplane was en route to Cali, as they were approaching from a distance out, the controller offered them a straight-in landing. Are you able to approach runway one liner? Would you like to shoot the one nine straight in? Uh, yeah, we'll have to scramble to get down. We can do it. When they first accepted the approach, the first officer remarked that we do need to get down in a hurry in order to accomplish this. Uh, yes, sir, we'll need a lower altitude right away, though. At the time the crew accepted the approach to runway one nine, they were too high too fast and too close in to safely make this approach. To lose altitude, the first officer deploys the speed brakes. This action will come back to haunt the flight crew in the final segment of the flight. The fact that they accepted that runway put the crew in a rushed and hurried manner. We get to Lua first of all. You want to go right to Cal or to Tolua? I thought he said the Raza one arrived. Yeah, he did. We got time to pull that out. The flight crew now needs to study the approach charts and reprogram the computer. Meanwhile, the airplane is moving at more than eight kilometers per minute. And when you start to rush and you can't prepare in an adequate amount of time, then additional errors start to occur. Can American Airlines uh, 965 go direct to Roswell? No. And then do the Roswell arrival, sir. Affirmative. Take the Roswell 1 and runway 19. Where are we? The crew looks at, at, their, at their charts in front of them, and they see the fix Roso, and it is identified by the letter R. So they naturally put R into the computer, thinking it will take them directly to Roso. The computer offers a list of R's to choose from, but unbeknownst to the pilots, none of them is Roso. Habit has shown, and the system is designed to place the one that is closest to your airplane first. And so here was an R that showed up first, and he selected that. A map display in front of the pilot shows the proposed course to the waypoint he selected. It will take the plane left into the mountains. According to American Airlines procedure, prior to executing an input such as this to select the R, you confirm with the other pilot, does this look correct to you? 965, 9,000 feet. This clearly was not done. If it had been, they would have seen a dotted line showing a provisional path from the nose of the airplane turning and going back to about their seven o'clock position. Captain Tafuri hastily presses the execute button. In aviation, we call that fast-fingered Freddy. When you don't confirm anything, you're in a big hurry to punch something in the computer and you don't confirm where it's 
really going to take you. Yeah, it's left, uh, left turn. Yeah, I, I got to identify that f***er, though. I... Unfortunately, the crew does not know that R stands for another fix that is 132 miles away behind them at about their 7 o'clock position, and that's where the airplane starts to go to. The flight crew of American Airlines 965 has unwittingly directed their aircraft off its intended course and into mortal danger. Uh, where are we? The plane was simply doing what it was programmed to do. In this case, it's to fly to Bogota, 130 miles away. More than a minute into the turn, the pilots are unaware that the plane is flying away from Cali and is heading dangerously off course. The first officer is getting the charts out. The captain's getting the charts out. They're trying to tune radios. No one's flying the airplane. No one's watching what happens. And they assume that the automation is going to take care of them. Sometimes it will, but in this case, it didn't. Uh, where are we? We're going out to... Uh, well, let's go right to Tolua, first of all, OK? Uh, yeah, where are we headed? Uh, 17-7, ULQ. What's with the ULQ? Here. There's an old saying in aviation, never point an airplane someplace that your brain hasn't been five minutes earlier. The American 9CX-5, distance now? Uh, what did you want, sir? Distance, DME. Uh, in this case, okay, the this airplane got in front of them. It was flying what was selected. And in fact, it was flying in beyond the pilot's recognition of where it was supposed to be traveling. The pilots had lost what's referred to as situational awareness. Left turn, so you want a left turn back around? No, nah, hell no, here. let's press on. We're to... pressing where, though? Tolua. Uh, that's a right U. Well, once going? they one, became two, unsure of their one, position, one, two, once they became one, confused two, and right. disoriented, it's... that's the time to click off the automation and to basically uh, abandon the approach, climb to the minimum safe altitude, and to, and to go to Cali. Right. Uh, let's, let's go to, uh, to direct to Cali. Instead of abandoning the approach and gaining altitude, Flight 965 continued its deadly descent. When the warning sounded that the plane was about to crash into the ground, First Officer Williams disengaged the autopilot within one second, but forgot to retract the speed brakes which had been deployed earlier. 965, this is Can you hear me? According to the official report, had they remembered to lower the speed brakes, the plane could have cleared the mountain with room to spare. This accident is known as a CFIT accident, which means controlled flight into terrain. By that I mean the airplane was controlled by the crew, and it was a perfectly normal functioning airplane, and the crew flew the airplane into the mountain. It's one of the leading causes of accidents of over the last hundred years, and still is a problem. Both these pilots were experienced pilots flying the 757 for American Airlines. And both these pilots were good pilots. And I think it's like anything else. Two good pilots were led astray by a problem that they were trying to figure out. And at the time, they failed to do the basic thing, fly the airplane. A court eventually ruled that the pilots of Flight 965 had shown willful misconduct during the approach to Cali Airport. Survivor Mercedes Ramirez, who lost both her parents, continues to deal with the crash. I think this was a classic textbook case of everything you should not do when flying a plane. Hopefully it's a wake-up call to pilots that no matter how many times you've flown to a city, you just have to be alert and aware because every little move that you make, you have the lives of people in your hands. <laughs> 